In this video, I'm gonna be discussing from ideal to market of the deal analysis app. And towards the end of it, see how much I actually made and the lessons learned from building out this app. So let's get into it. How I got the idea of building this app, I was actually reading through this book because I wanted to get more understanding about the analysis of real estate and how people do it and how real estate investors do it. Started reading it and I was like, oh, I can build an app from this. And then, you know, the first thing I wanted to do was, all right, just get something minimal, a minimal viable product, which we shall discuss next. So, you know, initially with the whole idea, I wanted all these different functionalities such as short-term rental analysis, fix and flip analysis, and so on. But I very much limited the scope of building out the MVP of this application to long-term rental analysis. You know, I start building it out. And you may already know if you've been following along, I did a vlog series on this, three vlogs. I put in the link in the description below of all three vlogs of how I was building out this MVP. So check that out when you get a chance. But the next part is just as important. Let's try it out. So yeah, I spent a couple of months actually trying this out before I actually thought about, you know, putting it out to anyone else. I really wanted to get down the calculations and everything to ensure that everything is kosher for the most part. And so far, and you know, I found a couple of things here and there, but overall, it did exactly what I needed to do. It did the long-term analysis, looked at the gross operating income, operating expenses, debt service and capital expenditures. And I thought, you know, job well done. So the next thing of, you know, actually trying this thing out is to test it in the market, see what I would get from the base user and see if, you know, if they wanted any particular features to make it much easier for them or any features that will, you know, be beneficial to the overall use of this application. Because at this particular moment, I was having fun with it, and I was like, okay, maybe someone else would try this out. So I was getting a lot of response from the vlog videos and everything to say, hey, let me try that, let me try that. So, you know, I set them up. So this is where I was getting the beta testers from. So this is friends and families being able to check out this out to play around with it, see if there's any particular flaws with it, how they would like to implement this or what they would like in this particular app. And for the most part, it's just setting up an environment where they can access that application without actually seeing the code, if they're, you know, pretty savvy and stuff, because, you know. So as I was, you know, waiting for their stuff, this is like a good month long, giving them a chance to play around with it. Got some awesome feedback and start implementing some feedback of my own because I really wanted to get into the fix and flip. So I got really motivated. I was like doing this podcast, one of my homies from college. And yeah, I got really motivated to build this functionality for the fix and flip stuff. As I was going, I actually got a chance to, you know, use it on a real analysis because a deal was sent my way and, you know, realized that it wasn't something great for me. Also, I didn't realize there was a bug in my particular code, so I fixed my code for the fix and flip stuff. So, as you know, as it seems as a continuous, you know, pattern, you know, get in front of, you know, the market, test it out fast as possible, find the bugs, and, you know, refine the product. So, before I, you know, really decided to put this out into the market, let me pause this thing up and, you know, make it look nice. So, during this time, I was actually mentoring someone on how to use Salesforce. So this took me roughly around like two months and I was actually aiming for a month. So yeah, so for the most part, it took me a little bit longer than I suspected. And I was uh, also doing some other things. I was discussing this during the podcast, you know, giving myself some grace. Didn't really take in consideration of, you know, mentoring someone and actually had them implement some changes to polish up this app to bring in the market. So yeah, it was, it was nice, you know, polish. Now, the next thing was like creating a landing page, creating a story so that when someone land on this page, they know exactly what they're getting. I think I uh, mostly achieved this, and this is what I was going over in my building stuff of what I was trying to essentially do. I'm not the best CSS kind of person. Me and CSS never got along. You know, I could do the HTML. I don't, I don't make things pretty. So for the most part, I went with the most easiest option as much as possible. Picking out a static template that essentially will meet 
pretty close to what I was looking for. And I can just change it around from there. I actually know a little bit about, you know, web design. I do a lot of graphics on my stuff. I designed out these different assets and made it where it's visually pleasing. And yeah, it was nice. It was very nice. And I think I did a really great job. I spelled out exactly what you're going to be getting with this application. Now, the other thing is actually getting this ready to buy and everything. And I, I went with a very simple system, Stripe. That's all I did. You know, they would pay for it and they'll, you know, be able to download the app. So once they go through the payment and everything, they'll be essentially given a link to download this app. And that's pretty much it. Um, I didn't really ever see anyone do this at first, but it seems like, you know, you know, just paving the way and seeing if anyone else who's going down this path, they'll know how to build out a Salesforce app and give it a market while actually going through the Salesforce app exchange and actually get paid for it. Because one of the things to take in consideration the route that I went is to make my code visible to people who pay for it. So when they download the link, they will have full access to the code, all the modifications to make all they want. And, you know, they can call me up and consult with me. If they want to do anything to the application, the application is not working to their expectations or whatever, we, you can set up a call to, you know, discuss those things. But, you know, just trying to figure out how to bypass this whole security review thing with Salesforce and having people pay that and I have to pay that and on a yearly basis. I didn't see any value behind that. I was like, this is just a shell of an application. They can build and stand upon it however they want to. So I would just give them the code. It only took me roughly initially eight hours. It took me roughly around two months roughly to polish it up. But so the marketing piece was very interesting. So let's get into that. The marketing. Now, I had a little soft launch. So posting on Facebook, posting on my social medias, hey, check out this, you know, application. Seeing if, you know, the initial people who came along will want to check it out. Of course, my prices were way too high, I believe. It was at $300, $300 for this application for a download. And of course, you know, I put in a promo code and everything for that as well. But, you know, it's still, still pretty too high. My market research in regards to like the competitors and stuff and what I was saying is that, you know, you will have someone who's, you know, providing you the same type of functionality, but they're putting it on a subscription basis and mine is half the price of that subscription basis. So I was like, rather than, you know, pay for a limited amount, and pay for a subscription basis or you can have a lifetime and you can do unlimited amount of deal analysis for long term and fix and flow functionality so that was my basis and that was my like reasoning behind my marketing and you may have seen my video on my channel because this is after i tried to do the google google thing try to do the google advertisement and everything spent like a good Maybe, um, I think I spent like a good $50 on this Google advertisement. I can't remember. Then I also spent roughly around, maybe around $50, $56 on Facebook. I would say this. I have better feedback and more conversions to clicking on my site from Facebook. Now, the big question is, how much money did I make? So... I'm not going to extend it long and prolong the answer. I didn't make no money at all. I lost money. I lost $100 or something like that. Uh, maybe 200 I can't remember. I'll put the number up there somewhere. But for the most part, I think my price is, and this is probably from the lessons learned from this, is that, you know, pricing is one thing. Marketing and how I market it was another thing, too. Like, my Google stuff only had like two clicks out of there, 4,000 views or something like that. So, but it had a nice high view duration. Like people were definitely watching it, but they didn't click to go to the site. As far as the Facebook stuff, there were more clicks per conversions and impressions and everything. So that was great. Every so amount of impressions, I had a much higher click rate to my site and traffic coming to my site. Cool. Now, the only thing I didn't you know, I, you know, being super lazy and stuff was setting up some Google Analytics, setting up Google Analytics to see if they actually click the buy button, install button, whatever like that. 
I was just hoping and you know, you know, wishful thinking to see exactly if you know I can tell how many people will click the site and buy it is because I can see it from my Stripe account. But as you know, no one bought it. Zero dollars in my Stripe account for this particular application. But what I'm gonna go back into the lessons learned in regards to this is that I think pricing was definitely one, advertising was number two, and three. I think the most important part, because I dealt with this before, well, marketing and putting out a product from ideal to market, is that I didn't build a community behind this application. I didn't talk about like my experiences of using the application per se. I did the vlogs and everything and great, but you know, more talking and more getting some feedback and how this application worked with with the people and with the community. And would this be something that they would like to see? So rather than, you know, making it secretive for like the people who would buy it, putting out that content, I uh, plan on putting out that content on a separate page to build out this community for this behind this application. Get some conversations going, get some things going, people talking in regards to, ooh, what about this? Hey, can you add this? Ooh, this would be a nice measure to, you know, take consideration for those different types of analysis. Something of those kind of, you know, and those rounds of things to see if I can continue to build this community, continue to build interest behind it. This is me not saying I give up. This is me saying that there's more that needs to be done. And I already told myself I'm going to spend as much time on actually marketing this out to then I actually built it out. So just like I said at the very in between here, I took roughly around like if I was to say took roughly around two months to build this application out, I'm going to give myself two more months to fully you know market this out so far i only did two weeks of it now the next month and a half i plan on doing more and more stuff in regards to building this community out and see if that's going to be something else. also adjusting the price as well because i want to get as many people as possible to start talking about it and that's the most important part get people to talk about it so let's see what happens so see you next one please